Hey, come on in. God bless you. Happy Valentine's Day to all of you. Um, I know there was a joke out there. It's called Single Awareness Day. That's not what we're promoting today. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day. You are loved. <laughs> Single you Awareness are so loved today. Day. Where did you hear that one at? That was on Facebook. That was somebody on Facebook? said the nephew or cousin, or somebody said it was better known as Single Awareness Day. <laughs> that is not what this is. This is Begin Again. It is Begin Again. I'm Dr. Ray Johnson here with my lovely bride. What's your name, Miss Girl? What's your name? Mrs. Is? Johnson. Mrs. Johnson. And today is the special edition of Valentine's Day, and we're going to spend some time talking a little bit, just a little bit about marriage and about God's purpose, God's plan, God's priority for it. And so we want you to join us and grab as many people as you can. It's going to be a good time tonight, <laughs> spending some time talking about this. Let us know when you come on in so that we can greet you and uh, spend some time talking to you. Let us know that's you as you make your way right on into the room. Amen. Yeah, this was our song that we came down the aisle on, wasn't it? Yeah, we spent some time. I guess that's the kind of love that's between us, huh? <laughs> we, got yeah. we got something. We got something. We got a little something. We got a little something. We got a little something. Yeah, let's get right on into this tonight. I think that I've got all I can do about with it tonight. Yeah. Hallelujah. So, yeah, listen. Uh, today, Valentine's Day. Now, tell me what that was on Facebook again one more time. Um, somebody, they were making a joke. There's a happy Valentine's Day to everybody, but they had a relative. I don't know if it was a nephew. Yeah. And I wish I could remember the person who said yeah. it, um, but they were saying it's uh, for them, it was Singles Single Awareness Day. Single Awareness Day. Day. Wow. <laughs> wow. I, 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 I would use that. I may not. I've got to figure out who said who that. Who said that? Um, if, you, if you're watching, because you, it was on my feed. Right. And he said, my nephew said it was Singles Awareness Day. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody put that inside of the chat. That's funny right that now. That was very funny. I mean, he could coin that trademark. That was yeah, right that, single word. <laughs> today is Valentine's Day. It's a day where we talk about love and really people spend time talking about relationships. And mm -hmm. so I got to thinking about that for this particular episode of Beginning Again. And, you know, this is that much needed conversation, sometimes of necessary endings, but more importantly, new, new beginnings, beginnings for people uh -huh. to be able to come together and right. really talk about what relationship is really all about. Mm -hmm. And so there there's this, a, a couple of thoughts came to mind. Good to, God bless you, Sister Margaret. Good to see you. A couple of thoughts came to mind for me uh -huh. uh, that start, you know, started my mind thinking about the kind of times and things that we are in. Yes. And so I first want to start with just kind of, you know, addressing this idea mm -hmm. uh, of the fact that is marriage something that is obsolete in our day and time? Mm. Is it an obsolete ideal? Is it just an ideal or is it something that is mm -hmm. really kind of, we're at a point where people are kind of doing away with it. It's not something that's in vogue per se. Right. You know, we, we talked on, on Sunday with Black History Month. We talked about black love, you know, right from the 1890s up to that the 1960s. That was very good. Yeah, I mean, you know, we were we were marrying at a much more mm -hmm. faster rate and staying a rate more than, you know, the dominant culture within inside of American society. But since right. then, things have begun to change. And even with the resurgence of President Obama and Michelle Obama, we saw just a slight uptick, but we're kind of leveling back off from that. Mm -hmm. So... You know, let me ask you, I'm going to start with you tonight and ask that question. Is marriage something that's obsolete tonight? I don't believe that marriage is obsolete. Yeah. I, I, what I do feel like is that people have made it um, an antiquated idea. Mm. And it's not so much that marriage is obsolete, mm -hmm. is that the value, it has been depreciated. Mm -hmm. um, and so we don't look at marriage the same way as it, maybe it was viewed in the past. Right. We, we find marriage sometimes to be inconvenient uh. um, and, it, and costly, especially when you're going through a situation and you haven't prepared for marriage in the first place oh my. and you end in divorce. You start with the so peas I, already tonight. <laughs> I'm going to be right in there with those. Go but ahead. Is it obsolete? Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. Obsolete means it's of no longer use, of no longer value, mm -hmm. and that's simply not the case. But have we devalued, devalued it? Mm. Absolutely. Mm. We have not seen um, the value in marriage. And so you see this decline. Um, people are living together. Right. But that commitment and that 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 um, vow mm. um, of coming together, mm -hmm. you don't see that as often. You see a lot of ceremonies. Yeah. Um, you see a lot of you know to do about the marriage ceremony yeah. itself. And yeah. We yeah. have all kinds of wonderful wedding planners. They do an amazing job. They event planners, um, wedding but planners. But after that yeah. ceremony is over, 
what happens to the covenant that was just made. So yeah. it's not obsolete, but it has been devalued and we don't spend the time and the money needed to keep the marriage going. Yeah, so I'm gonna put I'm gonna I'm gonna play moderator slash host just for a minute on another <laughs> okay. show that I participate in. So I need you to give me a a, a definitive yes or no. You gave me a <laughs> oh, maybe I can't so. get the both hand like you do. <laughs> Good to see you. First Lady Kim, thank you for tuning in oh, tonight and watching so us from Bella's all over the world. were absolutely They were love, wonderful. Love. They were wonderful. Hit. Thank you so much. Yeah, they were. So, yes I'm or no? I sent those pictures out to you. Yeah, you sent them the pictures. Do you say it's obsolete? You say yes or do you say no? It is not obsolete. You said it's not obsolete. I'm going to say, based on cultural standards, it is obsolete. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of what you had to say. But you said culture. Okay, well, go ahead. <laughs> You say Christ. You said culture. I said culture, uh -huh. right? Because I'm gonna do Christ in a minute. But culture, culturally speaking, many people don't necessarily see, as you said, the value of marriage. Right. Uh, because what many people make it about is the whole idea. Number one, okay, so now I got free access to sex. Mm -hmm. uh, you should have free access to sex, but that ain't necessarily the case <laughs> right. because there's a whole lot more that goes into that other than just that. Correct. And so many people are looking at it from the standpoint of what you can get out of it. Mm -hmm. And so we can live together. You don't need to be married. You can have sex together. You don't need to be married. You can have children together. You don't need to be married. You can buy property together. Mm -hmm. You don't need to be married. You can go into business together. You don't need to be married. Mm -hmm. uh, people are coming to into this with that kind of a mindset right. and with that kind of an idea. Mm -hmm. But I want to tell people to push pause there for a second because when, it start, when we start to talk about marriage, yes. uh, marriage is not our idea. Mm -hmm. It doesn't begin with a human thought process or a human mindset. Right. Marriage begins with God's mindset yes. and it is his idea. Mm -hmm. So if it's going to be his idea, we need to go back to him uh -huh. to see what he communicates about the purpose, plan, and priority of marriage. Absolutely. And so we're going to spend some time tonight talking about that. Uh, this is Begin Again. I'm your host, Dr. Ray Johnson. This is the Valentine's Day special edition. And we want to make sure that you tune in and join in with us. Put inside of the chat uh, for the first question tonight, do you believe marriage to be obsolete? Mm -hmm. Or do you think it's just been devalued? Give me a yes or no. And I'll tell you what, for the purposes of our show tonight, you can say both and and do like first lady did tonight. Uh, so let me just dive and just jump right in tonight. So, you know, when, when we talk about marriage being God's idea, uh -huh. So I had a couple of P's that were in mind okay. uh, that I thought about when I looked at scripture. Mm -hmm. And so what a novel idea when you look at scripture. And before there is the first church, uh -huh. before there is a denomination, for, mm -hmm. before there is any kind of ecclesiastical polity at all, uh, before any of that happens and takes place, the very first marriage took place in the garden. Amen. God himself officiated it. And it begins with him. Mm -hmm. So one of the very first purposes of marriage, I believe, to be scriptural, and I want to be sensitive with this one. Okay. My first P tonight is procreation. Okay. Procreation from the standpoint of reproducing after your own kind. All right. And there's a lot that's in that reproducing after your own kind. Mm -hmm. And I want to start right there with that, with the idea that really marriage is God's vehicle and tool to raise up godly seed. Okay. So Amen. that there are children that come behind you mm -hmm. for the next generation of per per persons to be able to live out what God's purposes, plans, and priorities are. Right. But the family dynamic is the first place where people come to understand and know God. Mm -hmm. More importantly, today being Valentine's Day, it's the first place where by which people come to know love. And so in many instances, so many people have broken families, broken home environments, mm -hmm. don't necessarily come from those kind of healthy backgrounds. So no wonder there's a devaluation of marriage because if that family unit is the place where you're supposed to experience love the most or the, at least first to come to understand God's love. Mm -hmm. And then parents can't get together to raise children and the fear and admonition of the Lord to do what David says, mm -hmm. blessed is the man whose quiver is full mm -hmm. to shoot them out into their future. Right. Then that whole idea of procreation kind of jumps back into what I said earlier about we can procreate without being married. True. But God, but God has designed marriage to be an expression of that procreation mm -hmm. going ahead of time. In other words, becoming professional creators, mm, if I can say good. it that way. So when you talk about that mm -hmm. creation and, and, and mm -hmm. reproducing the kingdom on earth, 
what was God doing in the very beginning when yeah. he created man? He was making an extension of heaven yeah. into the earth. Yeah. See, you said in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Mm -hmm. And the earth was void mm -hmm. and without form, yeah. form. And darkness was upon the face. Yeah. And God moved upon the face of the waters. Yeah. So the first thing God wanted to do was to get rid of the darkness and to extend kingdom into the earth. There it is. So by extending kingdom into the earth, mm -hmm. yes, he created um, the animals and the seas. And he parted uh, you know, the land from the water. And he created man. And then he created woman and brought them together and created that first institution of marriage. Mm -hmm. And his intention was to have heaven on earth. That's it. Heaven on earth. And he created man out of love. Right. Not out of any. He created him out of love. Right. Not out of selfishness, mm -hmm. but love and placed him in a position where he was set up completely. Yeah. He had the garden. He had uh, resources. He had everything at his fingertips. Yeah, yeah. And he even provided a spouse because he said it wasn't good for him to be alone. Right. And, you know, and, and God was, uh, we know him to be a triune being. Right. And putting him on the earth realized that he needed a help me. Right. Someone to be there with him. The yeah. two agreed, came into agreement mm -hmm. with one another. Mm -hmm. Flesh of my flesh is mm -hmm. what Adam said, bone of my bone. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. so God's in, in his, uh, in his creation narrative, we hear dominion, mm -hmm. um, be fruitful and multiply, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. take mm -hmm. dominion. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. nothing else should be having dominion over us. Mm -hmm. Not plants, mm -hmm. not animals, not nicotine, not alcohol. None of these things should be having dominion. Right. We ought to have the dominion right. because that's his mandate. And that's what we're spreading here on the earth. Absolutely. So when we say God, when we say marriage is God's idea, mm -hmm. we've got to begin with him to understand his plans, purposes, and priorities for it. And so we begin with the first P tonight talking about procreation. Before I move to the next one, I want to just take a minute and I want to speak to those couples who are having an issue or difficulty with conceiving. Okay. Because I don't want them to feel like because we can't procreate, mm -hmm. there, there's no need for us to begin to come together and to be mm -hmm. married mm -hmm. and to live, we, thereby we can't live out God's purposes. And that's, can't, that, that couldn't be further from the truth. That could not be further from the truth. Right. Uh -huh. uh, what I want to suggest and say to you is, and particularly with inside of African-American communities and people of color context, mm -hmm. there is a great need uh, for children to be mm -hmm. adopted. Yeah. Great friend of mine, Absolutely. pastor friend of mine, he and his wife been, were together for years, mm -hmm. never could conceive. Today, they have three adopted children. Mm -hmm. And let me just say this to those who are watching tonight in this particular area on Valentine's Day when it comes to procreation, becoming professional creators. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not just a matter of the loins right. of creating. It is the cultivation of the mind. Absolutely. And I want you to understand that there is a great need mm -hmm. with a black and brown and people of color of children who are not growing up in a solid, stable home and family of environment of a two-parent family. There's a great need in that. And so I would say it better this way. The only people who know that they are really loved are those who are adopted. <laughs> they because were chosen. They were chosen. They were chosen. And, and on purpose, with intentionality, they were adopted and brought into the family. Now think about that. That's how we know we are loved by God. And I, but I, I do want to mention this because we have a lot of single parent households right. and God becomes, he steps in and plays that role as father. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't discount single households at all Absolutely. because mm -hmm. God, God will place the solitary in families mm -hmm. and he will bring people along to help mentor children, to help uh, be, uh, walk alongside that uh, single father or that single mother. Right. God will supply the need that is needed. Absolutely. He'll supply it. Yeah. Um, so I don't want anyone to have any kind of self-condemnation or anything right. because uh, we have a lot of successful children coming out of single parent families. Absolutely. And they and go it, on to create wonderful two parent families. A, a, absolutely. As they come, as um, they grow up. But I don't discount or disvalue them at, at, by, by any right. means simply because right. um, when, when God takes up, when God brings a child into the earth mm -hmm. or God places a, a child into a family, God has, uh, it, 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 we hear all the horror stories and everything else, right. um, but he can provide when we open the access to him. That's yep. the key. Yep. When we open access to him to yep. allow him to be God, to right. allow him to come in and provide what we need, right. we will see a definite change right. in the mindsets, 
It's when we don't allow the access mm -hmm. of God, when we don't allow others to step in and we have community. Remember how they used to say it takes a, a, a village, village to, raise, to raise a family. That's exactly where, I, need, where yes, I was going. We need community um, to help raise our families yeah. because if we don't, the minds of our children are so captivated mm -hmm. by the world and by, by all of these other things that are calling out to them. Mm -hmm. And there's such an increase in mm -hmm. mental health issues. Mm -hmm. You know, we've experienced it in our own families mm -hmm. with my own children. Mm -hmm. You know, there's an increase um, in a need for uh, a stability mm -hmm. to be provided mm -hmm. and for a speaking into their life to say, no, you are fearfully and wonderfully, wonderfully made. made. Yeah. You are valuable. You are loved. You are beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because everything else in the world is saying, don't love yourself. Right. Hurt yourself. Right. Harm yourself. Right. Don't stick around. Right. Your parents don't love you. Right. Your parents abandoned you or want to abandon you. And this, you know, there's so many things speaking to our children um, that we've got to open our families up to the presence of God Absolutely. because that's what's going to make the difference which is to say uh, that it does god does want both the male and the female in matrimony together in covenant raising the child children keep in mind what i said that the primary purpose is in one area of procreation so that you can raise up godly seed and i want to just make sure i drive that point at home because many people think about getting married so now i just got access to free sex but don't necessarily want the responsibility that comes along with or the fruit that happens as a result of that. Mm -hmm. And let me just say this. I'll move on to the next point. And that is that as much as we talk about single mothers, there are single fathers. Correct. And so just as mothers it's need to be open. single father. Yeah, some yeah. very good ones. Need to be open to hearing how God says to place a child in the purview of men that can be involved in their life and shaping them. Men, I want you to also be open to hearing God about the women that need to be involved to ensure that that child has a balanced, healthy life right, perspective. Right. That is so, so important tonight. We're talking about is marriage obsolete? What, are the, what is heaven's primary purpose mm -hmm. uh, and plan and priority for marriage? Tonight, number one, we said procreation. Right. Let me go to number two. Number two, picture. Okay. When I say picture... What I mean is the image. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind, we're created in the image of God. Yes. We're created in his image. We're created in his likeness. Mm -hmm. So what happens, particularly with children, is that they grow up being able to see healthy images. Mm -hmm. They grow up, you mentioned the triune being, uh -huh. uh, that the three are one. Mm -hmm. Paul says this, it's a mystery yes. of how two become one. Mm -hmm. So when we start talking about the image, marriage is a reflection of the Godhead. Mm, yes. And I want I want us to to get an understanding of that God's not divided from himself. Yes. He's not schizophrenic from himself. Uh, he operates the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit operate in unison and on, here's a novel idea, one accord with each other. Mm -hmm. And what does Psalms 133 him say? How yeah. good and pleasant yeah. it is for brethren to dwell together in unity yeah. for there. And as you say picture, he says, mm -hmm. behold, yeah. take a look at this. That's the, That's the picture for us. That's the Amen. picture. Take a look at this. So, so marriage <laughs> is, is supposed to be a picture image Amen. of the Godhead and its unison and unity. Go Absolutely. ahead. Absolutely. Oh, I'm disagreeing with you. Amen. <laughs> okay. Do you want you want to add something else on that with that with that behold piece of the unity? Because at that point, a lot of marriages don't end up with the blessing of God on it mm. because they can't get to that point of unity and agreement. Mm -hmm. That unity is really not so much of cookie cutter right. uh, unity. Absolutely, it is really the meaning of the word unanimity. Mm -hmm. which oneness. means of a oneness mm -hmm. where we can be of the same mind, same mind. Yep. concerning very specific things. Mm -hmm. Are we of the same mind in our finances? Are we of the same mind in how we're raising children? Are we of mm -hmm. the same mind of our direction and purpose? Are we of the same mind and how we're going to handle moral issues or immoral issues or mm -hmm. ethical issues or unethical issues? Are we of the same mind? That's what unison is all about. And what marriage does mm -hmm. is gives the vehicle whereby which you can get in unison together. Mm -hmm. I got a whole lot more I can say on that, but I'm going to just stop right there because we got to move on with tonight's discussion. Go okay. ahead. What's the, what's the next one? Well, the next one, <laughs> <laughs> the next one is this. Okay. The next P is point of direction. So when we start to talk about the uh, unison in the marriage and we start talking about point of direction, mm -hmm. it's about guidance and modeling. So what kind of model are you putting forth for that next generation? Okay. What do they see? Because if the idea for procreation mm -hmm. is to be able to raise the next generation, what does David say over in Psalms? 
He says, children are an inheritance from the Lord. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full, right? For they are like arrows, right? In the hands. Go ahead on, quote it, go and go. They are like arrows in the hands of a mighty man. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So what that mighty man does, it means warrior. For the, your children, now this is so important for brothers. Let me just let me just give this point to them tonight, because as we get older, the older we get, the more we start looking back of the things that we haven't accomplished. Mm -hmm. What I want to suggest to you tonight, for both men and women, there are going to be some things that you may not accomplish that you are to pass on to the next generation for them to accomplish. Mm -hmm. So when when it says this warrior that shoots them like an arrow, mm -hmm. uh. And it talks about aiming them right. to their future, mm -hmm. aiming them at the gates is what that particular scripture, that particular verse there in that context of scripture means. Now, let me tell you about gates. Gates in that context is this. Okay. They are the place and the intersection where culture and commerce mm -hmm. intersect. Mm. They are, and it's actually three. It's the culture, commerce, and courts. Okay. Where the where the justice is done, where the economy is done, and then at the same time where culture is also done. Mm. We are to aim our children mm -hmm. at economy, at culture, and at the courts to make a difference on behalf of the kingdom of God. That's good. And there's some things that we may not get done in our time. But now, if you're going to point direction, mm -hmm. you've got to shape children to head in a specific direction mm -hmm. do away with this willy-nilly well whatever you feel kind of stuff no you pray as a parent you hear from god and then you start studying and watching your children mm -hmm. watching what their propensities are and then start training in them in them in that direction and aiming them toward mm -hmm. their future so that they hit the bullseye mark in their life Amen. and can look back and say i was cultivated and guided to where I am today. I know sitting right here with you tonight doing what I'm doing, I was guided into this place mm -hmm. and shaped into developed into this moment. Go ahead. When I think of, as you were saying, guide and I look at arrows, mm -hmm. I think of the word compass. Yeah. And you know, when you have a compass, you have four different directions, but you have a needle in that compass that is, I think it's a magnitude, is the magnetic field. Mm -hmm. um, but there's something that's guiding that compass. Yeah. And a lot of times what children need and what we need as a family is a compass, is yeah. a guide. Yeah. Um, so that when we get on the ship together, yeah. you know, when we're in that boat, that we're going in a specific direction. Oh, we're that's going good. somewhere. Yeah. We all have to be going somewhere. Yeah. So to guide them, we're going somewhere. They've got to know that they're going somewhere, that this is not all there is. No. Um, you know, sometimes we get caught up in, well, this is how I feel right now and this is all there is. But they've got to be able to see, have a, a, a vision for their life. And one, one of the things that I'm learning now is that I've got to teach my kids yeah. that they've got to have a vision for their own life. Yeah. I can't live for them. You can't live for them. Right. Um, we can suggest things to them. We can guide them in certain ways, mm -hmm. but we can't do it for them. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. can be the compass mm -hmm. and we can uh, be the encourager on the ship, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but we can't do it for them. So we've got to they got to put the out, work in. They've got to put the work <laughs> in. We've got to lay out some yeah. kind of plan yeah. or something for them to look at. Then uh, another word I think of is standard. Yeah. What is is the standard that we are holding for our children and if they fall below the standard you know if c is the standard if they fall below the c mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um you know what well, c's are never the standard, <laughs> they're they're never the standard. Yeah. but if we don't set a as the standard they will always think that c and d yeah. are okay that's it because they didn't fail yep um and but we've got to lift up a standard before when we raise the standard, yeah. they have something to attain to. That's they have something to go after. Um, and they'll start setting goals for themselves. But we've got to teach them. You know, I don't know that. Um, I think I learned goal setting in a, a leadership thing. Mm -hmm. And you remember student councils? Yeah, 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 um, yeah. I learned that in uh, high enrichment. Well, you were the smart leadership. kid in high school. Me, I wasn't. Yeah. Well, I, well yeah, I was average, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I was super smart. I was, you know. <laughs> but in that leadership conference, I mean, yeah. if you, you if you don't plan, um, you plan to fail. Your right. failure you to plan right. is, is a plan to fail. Right. I'm not the best at planning. I can have a, a thought in my mind mm -hmm. and I can follow the thread of it. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not that strategist that you are. Mm -hmm. But I can have a plan in my mind. You may not know exactly what my plan is. I can tell you in my mind that I have a plan. Mm -hmm. And you're like, well, I don't see it. I don't see it. But um, everybody plans a little bit differently, but you've got to have something in mind, something yes. to give them, some yes. standard to give them, yes. something to say to them. 
because um, a lot of times we, we're so tired and drained as as parents um, and we're like well I don't have anything else to give right. but we've got to be able to stop and say this is too important for me to discard, disregard or to, to dismiss Absolutely. I've got to do something with my kids I've got to spend time yep. with my children yep. I've got to say something to them I get the privilege of driving my kids to school in the morning mm -hmm. and speaking to them you know mm -hmm. um, and they may not always want to hear what I have to say I get that okay I get it <laughs> but I keep right on talking <laughs> Because yeah. you're pointing them in a direction. In a direction and yes. what we're talking about tonight is the purpose, plans, and priority of marriage. Mm -hmm. And so many people think that you're coming together for you to be lovey dovey with, you, with each other, to have great sex. And we can do C's, you know, confidants, companionship, courtship. Mm -hmm. You can do all of those things. But remember that marriage does not begin with us mm -hmm. as humans, it begins with God and the Spirit and how he has brought marriage into the earth. Right. And he's done that by design mm -hmm. with understanding about procreation, raising children up in the fear and admonition of the Lord. He's done that uh, by way of, of this pointing of direction that we're talking yeah. about tonight. And, and what's then, the ultimate di direction that God is pointing us to? To be able to ensure that we have a love for one another that the children can see the love of God and that yes, others can but see the love even, of God. I, think, I, I love that, but I think even bigger than that, Go you know, ahead. God always sees the end from the beginning. Mm -hmm. But when you think about the marriage supper yep. and the lamb oh, yeah, I'm talking and about the that bride Sunday. of yeah, Christ, yeah, you know, yeah, he yeah. wants us to be a, a picture of the bride of Christ yeah, in the church picture. That's without, the other one spot or, you know, yep. without spot or wrinkle. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, in, within that church, we are reproducing um, saints and we're reproducing those uh, mm -hmm. who are after the heart of God. Mm -hmm. And at the same time we're becoming that beautiful picture of how Christ gave himself for the church mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How, how God wants to have that marriage supper at you know when it when he comes back again you know the bride of Christ yep. and the church coming yep. together yep. it's supposed to be that kind of picture see and a lot, a lot of times honey we're not thinking like this when we're 19 and 20 and no. 25 and 30 and 35. Mm -hmm. and sometimes not even at 40 and 45. We're not thinking like this in terms of getting married and coming together. Mm -hmm. A lot of times what we do is we make marriage a selfish act mm -hmm. rather than a selfless act, mm -hmm. which is to say this. So tonight, procreation, picture, image, pointing in direction, guidance. Yes. Number four, and we're done letting the plane Extended edition tonight because it's Valentine's Day. And so we figured we give heaven's perspective about what marriage is. And so that last one is my big word, power. Power. Yeah. Okay. Not dunamis power. Not the dynamite <laughs> of Acts 2. But the uh, exousia power of Luke 19. Okay. The authority. Amen. So remember what God gives to Adam and Eve, the man and the woman, uh -huh. is dominion. Yes, he, does. he gives them. He says, I want you to go forth. I want you to be fruitful first. Mm -hmm. Then I want you to have Then I want you to multiply. Mm -hmm. And then after you multiply, I want you to replenish. Mm -hmm. And then I want you to subdue. And then mm -hmm. once you get that done, I want you to have some dominion. So when you look at the sequence of those things, be fruitful first. Once there's after there's fruitfulness, then you can take what you're fruitful in and multiply that. Right. That's everything for not only just children, but your finances. Uh, the industry issues or business ministry issues and things that you start and create mm -hmm. uh, organizations that you may establish. I want you to begin to spread the kingdom out right. on my behalf. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to exercise authority in the heavens, mm -hmm. then I want you to exercise it's authority it. in the earth. Right. And so when you look at marriage, it's a means whereby which God is able to extend himself through Absolutely. you in the earth question you should be asking somebody before you marry them uh -huh. and say yes to them how can we extend begin to ex kingdom. extend the kingdom what kind of power That's of influence true. can That's we have right before we mm -hmm. come together right <laughs> mm -hmm. i mean so and you don't have to wait the thing is don't wait to get married to no. extend the kingdom right. start extending the kingdom right where you are really and your kingdom assignment will find you well see what happens is, is when you start to get fruitful mm -hmm. when you start to subdue and you start to replenish then that qualifies you to be able to get married 
to be able to add what you're already doing to somebody else. But that's a whole nother teaching for singles. And we out of time tonight on Valentine's Day. So we thought we'd just give this addition with these four Ps tonight. Take time, jot these down. Somebody, when you catch this on the replay, put it inside of the chat so that we can begin to adjust our perspective. I had to throw that P in there just to kind of close out tonight. Uh, but this has been Begin Again, the Valentine's Day edition. Hope that this has been a blessing to you. Make sure that you share it again with somebody. We'll be back a little bit later on at the end of the month. Oh, this might be it for the month, isn't it? Or is this the second? Or the second? So we got, we, got, we got another Monday. We got the fourth Monday. The uh, yeah, the 28th, and we'll come back. Matter of fact, we'll be coming back from the marriage retreat ourselves. That's right. We'll That's probably right. have some good stuff to be able to share when we come back. Y'all take care. We'll see you again. God bless you. God bless you. you. Love bye -bye. you. Bye-bye.